please join me for the call to worship. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. Bring your gifts and your personalities, your strengths and weaknesses. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. He is just and wise, honest and true, caring and compassionate, eternal and holy. He is God. Prayer of Confession. Let us pray. Lord, like a shepherd, you never stop searching for your people. Your care for all of us anticipate our need. Before we recognized we needed your grace in love, Jesus gave his life for our forgiveness. Let us join together to confess our sins, followed by a time of personal confession. Let us pray. We confess that we need your forgiveness. We confess our sins. You are the shepherd and we are your flock, but we admit the times we have tried to take your place and take control ourselves. We admit that we have not always trusted your good news to be good for us. At times we have pleaded with you to care for us, but we have held back from caring for others and ignored the needs of others. Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us in the name of Jesus, loving shepherd. Teach us by the Holy Spirit to follow you in the days and places of the weeks ahead. It is in your son's name we pray. Let all God's people say, Amen. The Declaration of Forgiveness. Jesus called us to become humble and serve one another. And that the most important commandment is to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. This is the way of our sovereign. Go, knowing you are forgiven, and love and serve one another, especially our neighbors in need. Thanks be to God. God's peace is from everlasting to everlasting. Through Christ, God's peace becomes our gift to one another. Let us offer that gift to each other. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Peace be with you and also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. This is my favorite time of year because this is the time of year that we give thanks to all that we have. Even though we should thank God every day, this is a special time of year where we can really thank God for everything. Remember last month we participated in the World Thank You Offering and every day we added money in our box for something that we were thankful for. It was a month of giving and an attitude of gratitude. My mom, uh, my mom uh, on the phone, 
That's right, Sadie. That's very good. Does it so, matter how much? Sometimes no, it's very little. Very little, right. Okay. So listen, 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 we need to be very thankful for what we have and not look at what we don't have. Miss Erin, what helps you remember to be thankful for what you have and not what you don't have? Well, I like to think about this little rhyme that I know, and I'm going to tell you about it. And it has something to do with this yummy treat right here. And it goes like this. Listen, as you go through life, make this your goal. Look at the donut and not at the hole. Can you guys say that with me? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it and you repeat after me. As you go through life, as you go through life, make this your goal. Make this your goal. Look at the donut. Look at the donut. And not at the hole. And not at the hole. If I gave you a donut and and you looked at it, I bet you'd be so happy be like, yes, a donut. But what if we just focused on that little part in the middle that was missing? That'd be kind of sad, wouldn't it? When you have all this yummy stuff around it, and you just looked at that one little empty spot, you're like, I wish that had sugar and stuff on it too. And so we don't want to draw our attention to that part. We want to think about all the goodness that we do have and be thankful for and that. And you can even eat the whole. You, you can even eat the whole sometimes. So sometimes if you focus on the good stuff that you have, you even get to have the whole, right? It would be very sad to go through life missing out on what you don't have and not appreciating and, all that and you my have. Mom and, and my mom and dad eat whole donuts in one bite. In one and bite and if you that. even um, don't eat the whole, you can still eat the whole next yes, time. Yes, it's yep. real important and, to share. So will you pray with me, Miriam? Let's pray. Let's, Let's pray. pray. Can you fold your hands by your head and repeat after me? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for all of your blessings. Mm -hmm. Blessings. Help us to focus on. Help us to focus on what you've given us. What you've given us. And not what we don't have. And not what we don't have. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. And for your son Jesus. And for your son Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning. I bring a message from the session at Quail Hollow Presbyterian Church. On Thursday evening, the session held its regular monthly meeting and has, as has been the case for the last 10 months, our situation with the COVID virus was at the top of the agenda. As I'm sure you have seen, the rate of infections here in Mecklenburg County has quadrupled since mid-September when we restarted our in-person worship service. As a session, our first priority has and always will be the health and safety of our staff and the congregation and visitors. For that reason, we've made the, the decision to suspend in-person worship beginning next Sunday, November 29th. As I'm sure you know, this was an extremely difficult decision, especially with Advent at hand, but it is a decision we felt we had to make. We will continue to assess the situation every week and we will resume in-person worship just as soon as we feel it is safe to do so. We will continue our online service and hope you will join us in worship every Sunday morning at 1030 via the church website. We are working on the possibility of an outdoor service on Christmas Eve and we'll communicate those details as soon as possible. Please look for that in the Wednesday email blast and on our website. If you have any questions, please contact any member of the session or Pastor Hovey. Thank you very much.
the Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 16. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as these scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our New Testament reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46, which completes the lectionary cycle for this year. Hear now the word of the Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom, prepare for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer him, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you are the accursed. Depart from me into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of these, one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. And all God's people said, thanks be to God. Well, today is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. I guess we could consider today the New Year's Eve of the church year. This Sunday is also known as Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. 
Today ends our marking of ordinary time, and it moves us to the threshold of Advent, the season of hope for Christ's coming. On Christ the King Sunday, we pause, reflect, and remember that Jesus is Lord of all throughout all time and all history. But as we turn to our passage this morning, the parable, the judgment of the nations, is found only in Matthew. It's the third of the three stories in the 25th chapter of Matthew, and Jesus told this to his disciples. The other two parables are probably very familiar. The story of about the 10 bride, bridesmaids waiting for the bridegroom and the parable of the talents. This collection of Jesus' teachings to his disciples is his last teaching before the journey into Jerusalem where the events of Holy Week unfold. Jesus is preparing his disciples for carrying on without him. In this parable, we learn who and what Jesus values, with whom he identifies, and how he expects those to follow him to act. Matthew's text opens with a grand and glorious image of a different kind of king, the Son of Man, sitting on his throne among all the angels, gathering all the nations. As exalted and sovereign king, Jesus is the judge separating the sheep from the goats. The sheep, we learn, are the righteous ones placed at Jesus' right hand. They inherit the kingdom. However, the goats are placed at Jesus' dishonored left hand and are led away into eternal punishment. For many of us, this passage can be disturbing, unsettling, and downright challenging as we see what Jesus is doing. He is gathering, he is sorting, and he is judging. And what is the basis for this divine judgment of sheeps and goats and us? Jesus powerfully and profoundly states the criteria for his judgment. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. This king holds people accountable for the ways in which we live our lives and most importantly, how we treat the vulnerable, the marginalized, the powerless, and those in need. Both the sheep and the goats asked Jesus, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or as a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? When did we see you? To the righteous, Jesus responds, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And the sheep inherit eternal life, just like that. In contrast, those at the left hand of Jesus seem as if they are blaming Jesus for not telling them who Jesus is. When did we see you? Why didn't you tell us it was you? We would have been there for you and with you. If only we had known it was you. Then comes Jesus' reply. Just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And just like that, the goats receive eternal punishment. Jim Wallace is the author of Christ in Crisis, and he offers the following. Jesus is really telling us in this text, I was hungry and you fed me or not. I was thirsty and you gave me a cup of water or not. I was a stranger. And by that, that word means immigrant, refugee. You welcomed me or you didn't. I was naked, stripped of everything I had, and you began to restore that back to me or you didn't. I was sick and you didn't visit me or you did, or you cared about my health care or you didn't. I was a prisoner and you didn't come to see me 
or ask whether the system that put me in prison was a just system. It was me. The king demands people care for each other. But notice how both groups, the sheep and the goats, are surprised by Jesus' response to them. The sheep were living their lives in what one commentary describes as holy ignorance. They had unknowingly entered the joy of participation in Christ and grasped the true essence of discipleship. They acted out of simplicity and mercy when they recognized someone in need. The compassionate nature of the sheep reveals the authenticity of their character. They are not trying to impress Jesus or earn their way into the kingdom through their works, as if they could. They are simply trying to respond compassionately when they encounter people in need. Those they care for have basic needs that must be met in order for them to live and to live fully. Hunger, thirst, welcome in human community, clothing and shelter, health and connected connection to the wider community. Those were such pressing needs that are counted among the least of these by Jesus. And the goats are shocked and maybe a bit defensive with Jesus's response to them, that by ignoring and disregarding those in need, they overlook Jesus Christ himself. In those ignored encounters, they miss the opportunity to help their neighbors and siblings in Christ. We cannot possibly understand the least of these and who they are if we are not in proximity to the poor and vulnerable in our communities. Within our denomination, there are PCUSA congregations that identify themselves as Matthew 25 churches. These congregations proclaim a loving commitment to radical and fearless discipleship in one of three ways. They challenge people and congregations to deepen their faith and get actively and joyfully engaged with the community and the world. They advocate and act to break down the systems, practices, and thinking that underlie discrimination, bias, prejudice, and oppression of people of color. Working to change laws, policies, plans, and structures in our society that perpetuate economic exploitation of people who are poor. What if we approached every person, every place, every circumstance, every choice, as if we see Christ? And if we don't, if we can't see Christ, what if we approached every person, every place, every circumstance, every choice, as if Christ sees us. Either way, there is a seeing taking place. And when I say seeing, S-E-E-I-N-G, seeing taking place, it is truly seeing. So as we patiently await the birth of the Christ child this Christmas season, let us pause. Let us be prepared to see him in the hungry and the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, the prisoner, the broken. It is by God's merciful and loving grace that we are transformed to see Jesus in other people, the least of these, as God sees us, as God's own beloved children. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, let us say together what we believe by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
And now let us pray together the prayer your son taught his disciples by saying together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, it is now time that we would normally collect our offering for today. But we ask that you support our ministry either online or by mailing a check to the church if you feel so inclined. But let's listen to these words. In giving to God, we grow closer to God. Let us offer our life and labor to the one who draws us near and freely gives the treasure of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we are so grateful for each and every person who contributes to the ministry of this church, which contributes to the ministry of Jesus Christ. For all that you are and all that you have done, we give you thanks, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. We wait in hope for the coming of your realm and offer these gifts to further your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.